peace, blessings. I am your noble host, Pharaoh Fresh, and this is the resurrection of the Pharaoh. This is a project I've been working on for a long time. Hopefully you guys can benefit from this. Hopefully it makes you more curious to dive deeper into extensive knowledge of our history, the hidden knowledge of our history. The Western world hides this specifically from Somali people. And it's just about time Somebody connects the dots, sets the record straight. So without further ado, let's get into it. So from here we can see on the bottom left, images on the temples of Egypt, or should I say Kemet, of Puntites carrying the sacred tree. And on, on the top right, we can see an official stamp of Somalia depicting the exact same image. Is this by coincidence? I think not. You can also see a picture of Kanan, the famous singer, and how it matches up, how his complexion matches up with those on the walls in ancient Egypt. Or should I say Kemet? On the bottom right, we can see the ancient Somali writing, which is no longer used because Somalis choose to adapt into Arab cultures instead of embracing their own. Although a large percentage of the culture is still purely Somali, when it comes to things like linguistics, writing, phonics, they tend to follow the Arab in modern day. Some would say it's better due to religion. However, that makes no sense. I think we can all agree on that. So here in this photo it says, in short, in, sorry, short history of the Egyptian people, Budge stated the Egyptian tradition of the dynastic period held that the Aboriginal home of the Egyptians was Punt. I mean, tell me something I don't know. You have many researchers, both European and African, trying to deceive us from the truth. They try to say, these were the Egyptians. No, these were the Egyptians. The Arab man would say, these were the Egyptians. But when it comes to linguistics, culture, phenotype, complexion, spiritual systems, they can't seem to connect the dots. It's one big conspiracy, one big deception. But I'm here to quote unquote white the whiteboard and start anew like the phoenix rising from the ashes so let's continue firstly in order for us to understand what the ancient Egyptians spoke we must go to the root which is the origins of the Afro-Asiatic language now if we look at this slide over here we can see there is a mass landmass of Africa which speak Afro-Asiatic. But where was the true origins? This is one topic Western scholars try to hide from us Somalis. Where is the origins of the Afro-Asiatic languages? And not only Somalis, but the Oromo, the Beja, the Saho, everyone of pure Cushetic origin. So let's move on. In the next slide, we can see that the E1B1B is the founder of the Afro-Asiatic language. 
Now isn't that funny? Because the E1B1B dwells deep into the Horn of Africa. So in a sense, any layman researcher would then conclude that E1B1B is the founder of the Afro-Asiatic languages. But you know Western scholars, they'll try and deceive us. They'll try and use multiple different phrases to divert us from the truth. And again, you can see on the right hand side how much of Africa actually speaks in Afro-Asiatic language. Now I'm gonna really connect the dots. Here on the left, starting from number one, which the Western scholars call Yuramat. Yuramat as being the homeland of Afro-Asiatic speakers. Now, Yuramat is just a word that the Western scholars made up to indicate a location of the founder of Afro-Asiatic languages. So, starting from number one to two to three, and then going around of all of Africa. So it started off with Proto-Afro-Asiatic, and then it went to proto cushetic which is a pure, hmm, how do I say? In a sense, Cushetic language is what the Somali language is. It's also what the Oromo language is. It's also what the Beja language is. And all the other Cushetic people. They may have different dialects, but in their language, they may have 20% of vocabulary apart, but it's still very familiar. The cadence, the phonics is still very familiar. You can get a grasp. If you're a Cushetic speaker, you can get a grasp of what another Cushetic speaker of another language is saying. So here it says, Afro-Asiatic Euromat is Ethiopia and Greater Somalia, the founders of all Afro-Asiatic ever spoken. These founders were of pure Cushetic origin, E1B1B, i.e. Somali, Afar, Oromo, Saho and Beja. So you can see like Oromo in Ethiopia, Somali in Somali, Greater Somalia, Beja in Sudan. You can see how it's rising up towards Egypt. Now here we see frequency of Hablo E1B1B in select Afro-Asiatic speakers. We see Berber languages 16 to 100%. Chadic 0 to 13 percent, Cushetic 25 to 100 percent, Omotic 30 to 80 percent, Semitic 7 to 93 percent. So we can see how I'm connecting the dots. E1B1B is the founder of the Afro-Asiatic language. Those that carry E1B1B reside where? Deep in the Horn of Africa. I'm talking Greater Somalia, Ethiopia, those like Oromo, Afar, and the people of pure Cushetic origin, these are the founders. And rising up towards Sudan would be Beja and all the other Cushetic speaking languages. Now, you do get some trolls on the internet that state the Nilotic or the Bantus were the true founders of Egypt. However, how can you be the true founders of Egypt? if you don't even speak an Afro-Asiatic language. The hieroglyphics is written in an Afro-Asiatic language. The ancient Kemets or the ancient Egyptians spoke an Afro-Asiatic language. So I'm not fooled by deception of these so-called researchers. I speak a Cushetic language and I'm connecting the dots. The Western world tries to hide this from you, especially the Horn Africans. Notice, after this video, notice, look around and notice in your history, research, how much they try to deceive you from connecting the dots. Now let's move on. E1B1B is found at high frequencies outside of Europe. Over 80% in Morocco and East Africa, Greater Somalia, and Ethiopia, in brackets Oromo, Saho, and Afar. Males make up to 40 to 80%. North 
African countries of Tunisia, 70%. Algeria, 60%. Egypt, 40%. The Middle East, in Jordan, 25%. Palestine, 20%. Lebanon, 17.5%. Now, let me just pause it there. Notice, all of, these ca all of these countries, they all speak an Afro-Asiatic language, whether Somali, whether Oromo, whether Arabic, whether Hebrew, etc. Whether Berber, wh whatever. These are all Afro-Asiatic languages, which were then, which were given to these populations from the Horn of Africa. On the European continent, Eastern and Central Europe, we're going to skip Europe, just there. You guys can read it for yourselves. Hablo group E1B1B, formerly known as E3B, represents the last major direct exodus from Africa into Europe, believed to have appeared first in the Horn of Africa about 26,000 years ago and scattered to North Africa and the Near East during the late Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods. E1B1B lineages are closely linked to the diffusions of Afro-Asiatic languages. The highest genetic diversity of Hablo group E1B1B is noted in East Africa region in Ethiopia and Greater Somalia, which also have the monopoly of older and rarer subclades like M215, M281, V6 and V92. So again, the dots are connecting. So if you're just a regular researcher that just researches off YouTube, you won't find this information because most of the researchers on YouTube are whitewashed individuals selling a deception. They are part of the big conspiracy. Same with, I hate to say this, but some of my Africans. You've got African people, people of African descent that live in the diaspora who have never ever been to Africa giving you research on Africa from the white man's perspective. And I just find that pure comedy. So you must dig deeper and do the research yourself. Past me. Over me. You feel me? So let's move on. Again, you can see the E1B1B and how it travels up. Again, matching the landmass of Afro-Asiatic speakers. See, this type of information, when I present it, there's nobody that can refute it. Because they have nothing to refute. They seem confused in their pursuit because they have nothing to refute. And the Western researchers, they know this. They just choose to not tell you. So let's move on. Again, look carefully. 85% coming from the horn, the E1B1B, meaning these are the founders of the Afro-Asiatic language. And we're gonna dive real deep, real, real deep. Fun fact, Western researchers refer to these Africans as Caucasoid or Ethiopians by the Greeks. Or they, some of them call them Hamites, Otomoli, Kushites, Puntites, Berberi, West Eurasian, Mediterranean race, the Sun people, Elamites. You see how many names they give these type of people is to confuse us. So we think they're talking about other people when they're really talking about the Horn of Africa, the people of the Horn of Africa. You have other Africans saying these people are mixed, these people are so and so, not giving the credit that. These are pure seed African, which come from the Eve gene. The deception is real. The big conspiracy is real. Let's proceed. What Dunka? The country. Now, I noticed that Wakanda if you move the K and the D, spells Wadanka, meaning what? It means the country. 
and Wakanda is the country of Black Panther. Now, before you get onto me, I know it's all fiction, but you can see where the directors and the creators of this comic got their influence from. And then I found a phenomenon called typoglemia. Now, what is typoglemia? Typoglemia is a neologic neologism for a perpetuated recent discovery about the cognitive processes involved in reading text. The principle is that readers can comprehend text despite spelling errors and misplaced letters in the words. So isn't that funny how I picked up on that in the movie and it made perfect sense? How do I get this? Or let me give you an example of typoglemia. Let me know if you guys can read this. I'm going to give you guys a moment. Have you guys got it? It's just your brain just picks it up. You feel me? You don't have to read it out. Your your mind just deciphers, de- deciphers it for you. So this led me to a, the phenomenon I was talking about, which I call the founder effect. Now, what is the founder effect? The founder effect is tapping into your DNA to reveal certain truths about this world. Now, I've spoke to many Somali scholars and a few of them told me this is impossible. You can't do things like this and um, criticised me in my efforts. However, there is a book called Cosmic Memory. You can check that out. And many scientists have found out that DNA does hold large amount of information. DNA can, one single DNA strand can hold more information than your computer, than a quantum computer. So what is that really telling you? So when I tapped into this founder effect, I just started to connect more and more dots, hailing from my DNA. And you have the ability to do so yourself. You just need to tap in. And this is what the Western researchers know. See, it gets much deeper than what you think or what you've been taught this is profound information this is profound knowledge now we know where the Afro-Asiatic language originated from we know who hold the genetics of the founders of Afro-Asiatic languages so what more do you need to tap into your greatness I have everything I need right now thanks to my Ancestors, that key, the God and High Store. So let's move on. Again, DNA is powerful. It goes beyond just your body. It's universal. Your blood, the way you look, your height, your hair type, your features, everything, your phenotype, is dictated by what. DNA. We also know DNA can hold trauma of up to 15 generations. It can also hold abundance from up to 15 generations and beyond. This is the type of information and knowledge they don't teach you in schools. The color of your skin is dictated by what? DNA. Let's move outside of ourselves as Homo sapiens sapiens. Let's look at plants and animals. The way they are born and raised or grow is dictated by what? Their genetics. Powerful, powerful stuff. See, this type of knowledge you'll never find on YouTube from other Somalis because they're in the Arab worship mentality. They believe Arabs hold everything, all the knowledge because of their religion. Now, I'll be one to say that most of the prophets mentioned in your Quran are melanated people who originated 
in the Horn of Africa. But the Arabs won't tell you. They'll tell you Adam was an Arab man. Now the concept of Arab is a deeper concept. I'll get into that in another video. Let's move on. Here you can see Afar language, Oromo language and Somali language and how closely linked they are. Again, up to 20 to 40% vocabulary difference. It's just profound stuff. So it goes to show you that maybe 200 years ago, the Afar, the Oromo, the Beja, the Saho and all Kushetic people were of one origin and one people that spoke one language. Let's say 500 to 200 years ago. That's how recent it was. Hence why they always keep the horn in misery when it's got the most abundance. Mind you, the ancient Egyptians used to call it the land of the gods because of its abundance in resources. And not only that, because of its spiritual system and its introduction to Sudan and then later Egypt and also because of its language, its consciousness, its energy. All of this was brought, brought up to Egypt from the Horn, starting from Greater Somalia all the way up to Egypt. So let's move on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down and decipher hieroglyphics from ancient Egypt into Somali and at any point any point I want you to put the timestamp in I'm not making no sense just put it in because I'm connecting serious dots now let's get into the meat of the video this is the hieroglyphic they translated it as bring a verb now when they translated it translation is in in or n in or n so in the Somali language can bring in Somali and in ancient Egyptian e can bring to me in Somali and ancient Egyptian you see how this is all connecting from the founders of the Afro-Asiatic language going up to Egypt what of my has changed was maybe just dialect but the substance the content in the words is still there this is what I call the founder effect so again let's look at it they translated it as in or in an or in and what do Somali say so in or in means in ancient Egyptian bring in Somali we say can Again, we got that E-N in it. Can. It's not, it's not in, what can. Which means both bring in ancient Egyptian and in Somali. Now let's go to the next word. Because I've got a plethora of words I'm breaking down. Next verb is bury. You can see the hieroglyphics there with the number codes just to verify if you want to do your research further. Bury, and they translate it as QRS. And in Somali and, and in ancient Egyptian, it means ass. Ass. See, the thing about Western research is they can't pronounce certain letters or words. Kha, a, words like that of pure Afri African Afro-Asiatic origin. N, Ige, Ke, Somaha. They don't understand how to break it down. So they try to interfere with it. So again, bury. Ass. Ass. Now if you reverse that, if you reverse that, so from QRS to SRQ translates in Somali aski aski the burial so we went from the bury as see they they tried to use the q as a ca which is a, a. 
Do you understand? And if you reverse that, ask you the burial. So ass is bury. Ninka. Ninka dentai ass. And then if you reverse that, SRQ. Aski. SRQ. Aski. So let's move on. This one means likewise. You can see the hieroglyphics again. And they translated it as mit. M mit. So what do we say in Somali? Mid. Mid. See, they try to use the T instead of the D. Well, mid. Mid. Same thing. You can see it. Mid. And then they translate it as mit. Mid. Mid. One of with something in Somali. One of slash with something in Somali and ancient Egyptian. Mid un EC. Mid un EC. Mid un EC. I only want one of that something. Wakala mid. Wakala mid. It's identical or it's the same in Somali. Isku mid. Likewise, identical in Somali. So you can see how I'm translating these words and it has the exact same definition. The exact same definition. This is not by coincidence. Again, this is the founder effect that many modern Somalis and many modern Kushites have forgotten. They rather give praise to the pale skinned individuals of the world instead of seeking their greatness. So now let's move on. This is a beautiful one. It's going to shake up a lot of people, a lot of African-Americans and a lot of people in the world. This one they refer to as Ma'at, Ma'at, but it's really pronounced Mahad, Mahad. And again, we can see the hieroglyphics and it says here on the Google search, Mahad refers to the ancient Egyptian concept of truth, balance, order, harmony, law, morality and justice. And you can see pictures of Ma Mahad there. Mahad is of African origin and in Somali language, Mahad means a blessing or harmony. Is that not identical to Mahad, the ancient Egyptian deity or the ancient Egyptian cosmic law? I'm going to read a Google for you again. Mahad refers to the ancient Egyptian concept of truth, balance, order, Harmony, law, morality, and justice. In Somali language, mahad means a blessing or harmony. Mahad senid also means thank you. Common Somali name given solely to males. It will also suggest it was used to be given to females in ancient times. A variation of this would be nabad wa nabad. Meaning the same exact Definition. Mahad iyo nabad wa iskumid. It's funny because I was just using mid in the last video, but you get that drift. Mahad meaning peace, harmony, love, unity, order, justice in Somali and ancient Egyptian. Hadu gofku we diyo manta satahai wa mahad wa iskam mahad adigana. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You can see, if you're a Kushetic speaker, especially of, specifically of Somali origin, you can understand how that correlates. And if you're somebody of, you know, another origin, I'm sure you can see how this, color, co how this connects to, I was going to say correlate, but tongue twister. <laughs> so let's move on. And mind you, this video is not created to be professional in any sense. It's just an expression, an expression of truth. A reclaiming of one's lineage. So let's move on. This one in the hieroglyphics is pain. The letters given to this hieroglyphics is A-H-W. 
So, awir, awir, pain in Somali and ancient Egyptian. What they're trying to say is, AHW is awir. Again, I've put it in the English way and I've put it in the Somali way. So, awir and then awir. You can see it's exactly the same. Hanun, pain. Well, hanun is painful. Awir reversed. W H A Wa Hanun. You see how this is all co correlating. Let's move on again. At any point, you can go back and re listen. I suggest you, I urge you to re listen so you can fire up your curiosity to do more. Because I'm searching for the people that's going to go beyond me and dig up the real truths. Although I will do so myself. But I don't want Somalis in the world or Kushites in the world to rely solely on me. All this low self-esteem energy that I get from you lot needs to be diminished and deleted. And you must reclaim your greatness. So now let's move on. The next word is... You hear this a lot. Amun Ra, etc, etc. Amun. So they translate this as Amun, a noun. Amun, re, a noun. So, how do we translate this? The thing is, they put I M N as a translation. So, when people say Amun, they're not even really saying the real thing. It's meant to be Imin, Imin. Like in, how do we say in Somali to worship and praise? Amin, 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 Ebe, Amin, Ilahe. Amin Ra Amin Gurah You see how this is all making sense now? It, people say Amun or Amin But then when they translate it, it comes up as Imin e Imin But what they really want to say is Amin 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 Ilahi Amin Ebe Amin Ra Amin Gurah Let's move on. Like I said, at any point you can always go back. <laughs> Next one is count. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next one is count, which they put the translation as HSB. HSB. And how do we say count in Somali? Hisab. Hisab. So Hisab is identical in ancient Egyptian. To count in ancient Egyptian and in Somali is Hisab. Again, if you want to count, we also say Hisabi. Count it. Hisabi. Count it in Somali and ancient Egyptian. Again, you can look at the hieroglyphics on the screen and make that correlation yourself. Like, look deeply. HSB. Is the translation of this hieroglyph which means to count. Somalis say Hisab. Hisab as count. Let's move on. And by the way, if anybody's in the comments saying, oh, there's some Arabic words in Somali language, at least now we know where the origins, the origins of the Afro-Asiatic languages is coming from. The Horn of Africa. So it's not that Arabic influenced the Somali language is that Somali influenced Arabic and then later Arabic came and influenced Somali because they're part of the same language family does that make sense so who, who influenced who first and who was speaking first the Afro-Asiatic language just a question again we have another hieroglyphic which translates as alone the letters they gave it was W-A, and it's an adjective. So alone, W-A, an adjective. Wa, used to single out something in ancient Egyptian and in Somali. Wa, Bahal, it's a beast. Wa, Mesha, it's over there. Wa, universal creator alone in creation. Again, the connections is just running deep. This is the found effect. Hopefully as I'm speaking and going through this, 
your memory is activating, your genetics is activating, and you're tapping into greater sources of abundance within yourself. Because everything outside of you is all an illusion anyways. And again, you have Western scholars saying, we don't know who the Egyptians were. We think the Egyptians were white. We think they were Arabs. We think they were Bantu. We think they were Nilotes. I mean, can they break this down like I'm breaking this down? Don't worry, I'll wait. Let's go on. This is the last one, and it's a powerful one. Ancestors. You have many black people that worship their ancestors, but they don't tell you this is where they got it from. The Horn of Africa is where they got it from. I was debating with one of my friends, close friends, and he was saying to me, no, Somali is not the oldest language in the world. Oldest, sorry, excuse me. Somali is not the oldest living language in the world. And I said, yes, it is. Because it predates even Tamil, which is about 8,000 years old. Afro-Asiatic languages is what influenced all of modern languages today. Latin, Greek, Indian, you name it. The Sanskrit was influenced by Kushites. The Greeks were influenced by Kushites. All of this stuff, they just hide from you. Like I said, it's a one big conspiracy. One big conspiracy. So this one, ancestors, they translated it as itu, itu, I-T-W, it's a noun. But what do Somali say for ancestors? We say isr, isr. See, they put a W because they don't know how to pronounce the ar. You see what I'm gonna say? Isr. Isr, meaning in Somali and ancient Egyptian, ancestors, previous lineage, long-loved li- long genetic relatives in both Somali and ancient Egyptian. They put it, we say isr. It. But look, again, they put it, but they put a W next to it, meaning they want to say itu. Itu. That's what they want to translate it as. But really, it should be translated as isr. So yeah, again, you can see this is one big deception, one big conspiracy trying to delude African, true African history of the ancients from the world. So the people of East Africa don't gain it. Or should I say the people of the African continent don't gain it? Because the people of the Horn of Africa, and most Africans won't tell you is, they influenced all of Africa. You saw the map at the beginning and how much landmass is covered by Afro-Asiatic speakers. So where was the origins of the Afro-Asiatic speakers? I should prove that to you too. I, proved, I also proved to you how ancient Egyptian words and the Cushitic Somali language is identical. Identical. Again, we have big deceptions, trying to say that Ramesses was a, a white man or an Arab. Again, at the top of the screen, you can see how the markers of the genetics flows. You can also see a coin at the bottom of the Somali Republic giving homage to their ancient Egyptian ancestors although they were the true founders. You see? And again, top of the screen, you can see a Somali man on the right, Pharaoh Ramesses on the left, and in the bottom of the bottom right of the screen, you can see photos of a Somali man with ancient Egyptian statue, and the, the, the deception that they try and paint today of a white Egypt, of a white ancient Egypt, which to this day doesn't make no sense. Nice try. This is powerful stuff. Powerful, powerful stuff. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into more videos, breaking this down. So send this to a friend, dig deeper, keep doing your research, keep being curious. I am the bridge from the diaspora into the African continent, connecting. What I don't like is people claiming spirituality and all these type of things, but they've never even been back home to the motherland. They haven't even reconnected to their ancestors or their Isr. They're what I call sideline watchers. They just watch in Western land 
and don't even use their power and influence to educate or uplift their people. This is powerful stuff. This is why I say I'm the bridge. I'm the hand that's reaching out from the diaspora into the African continent and connecting back and forth, back and forth. Because it's the ancestors that called me back. It's the ancestors that showed me this connection. And I'm not going to stop. Regardless, if my people hate, if the Western world hate, I don't care. It doesn't concern me. What concerns me is speaking the truth, the objective truth. Connecting the dots. So in a sense, coming back to my friend who I was debating about Somali, Somali being the oldest living language. When I, when I proposed all this information to him, he was speechless. He couldn't refute me. He didn't know what to come back with. And that's the same with most of the world. When you bring the truth, they don't, they don't have nothing. They don't have no foundation of truth to refute with. Because you brought everything forward. You brought the truth forward. So be careful. Be careful who you listen to. As a Somali individual, I just want to let you know that yes, you are a target in the Western world. These people are trying to deceive you from your own great history, from your genetics, from your phenotype, from your blood, from your ancestors. But the ancestors are calling out. The ancestors are calling out. Tatki Isr Kena, but no Yereya. Baldege so. We Kailina Yan. We Ku Yere Yan. Tatki Hore Masarka Degna, Wa Anaka. Anaka Masar Disney. Be good, be good, Anukunaga Emada. Mafahamti. Willie Ganta no Shahai. Nin Ad, Nin Mado, Nin Hindi, and Nin Araba, Wapa Yanuku Shagi, Williga, Adega Barai, Warur Tadi, Wiliba Hadig Ankusarana, Tulka Lada, Nala Kuya Isalalia Hoyedin Alalia, Abihin Alalia, Walalaha Alalia, Rerkin Odan, O Somali Kushateka. Alalia, we hear the dunya in the in the dilan. What then can a nakadan? Harome son, Arab car, a message key the tactitba, Harome son. Elahe Huxia, Quran, ugly buxia, what no kusia, what hakalo bantai. A do is the malde, so ka, will you wahur de? Powerful stuff. Share this with a friend. And yeah, the resurrection of the Pharaoh shall be digitized.